Ooh, welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer? dog Vegas, Vegas. I, 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 Let's feel go. Like, <laughs> I feel like we had our first bit of Vegas happen <laughs> over the last 12 hours. Um, uh, football's here. Uh, kickoff is here. A lot of, a lot of tweets celebrating football being back. Sean. Yes, I'm ready to celebrate throwing out some DGN ass build your own bets right now because already in the shop. We still don't have our yellow hard hats, <laughs> but I did bring the jacket because we are talking Vegas. Tonight. We are. We are. Uh, we got a jam packed show. First off, joining us uh, to talk some prop bets for Thursday night football win bet build your own bets. Mr. Terrell Furman. What's happening Terrell? Nothing much, man. I'm trying to. I'm over here trying to figure out why Kramer has three drinks next to him. He's got like, to how stay long hydrated. does he plan on being here? <laughs> it looks like he's prepping for the 24-hour draft again. He's got three different drinks, a thanks coffee, for, thanks for noticing, or something. He's got yeah. his. He's got a tuna and avocado. He's his ready. spicy Perrier water. French, just, just French. wait. Just wait till we get to the the the, the Vegas to dos because. We're going to be talking about all of those things. Yes. We're going to be talking about hydration, snacks. Yeah. We're, we are going – we get a lot of questions about, like, hey, what's the right move in Vegas? Me and my buddies are going. How do we do Vegas D-Gen style? So we got a whole segment with that. We're actually going to be joined by Malcolm, who made it all the way – Malcolm Bamford, who made it all the way over from England. He oh. will be joining us uh, later in <laughs> studio as well. But this being the NFL, we got to talk. Kick off. Right around the corner. That's right. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T. Get that uh, bet $100. Get a $100 free bet. Yes, and, of course, win bets own. Build your own bet. We are going to be giving out our favorite build your own bets for the tonight's action, a.k.a. a same game parlay. Uh, they get it all over on win. And, again, win supports us. Thus, we need your support of win. That's how it works. Oh, man. Uh, so much action over there. Love the uh, adjusted lines. And if you're in a win bet casino, say 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Or, sorry, $1,000. All you got to do is go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T to claim your free bet today and... We roll football contest, $5,000 up for grabs and a two night stay at the win Las Vegas offer subject to change service conditions at win that come must be 21 or older and present in the state where we play through win is available. If you're someone, you know, has a gaming problem, call 1-800-522-4700. Uh, also Elias sports bureau, shout out to the Elias sports bureau and their new Elias game plan app. This thing has everything. It's the ultimate companion uh, for NFL betting fantasy. They got NBA and MLB on there as well. There's a ton of great nuggets. You've heard of the Elias Sports Bureau. Well, now they have their own app, perfect for gambling and fantasy. Uh, I mean, I was just reminded. I'm high on Najee Harris. Najee Harris had the most receptions as a running back. Austin Eckler was behind him in receptions. Those are the kind of like just fun little nuggets, great reminders. Again, uh, love the information I'm getting from Elias. And uh, if you download the Elias Game Plan app, subscribe to their monthly plan, you get a 14-day free trial. So try it out. See if you like it. I know you're going to. Use that promo code SGPN, Lies Game Plan uh, Sports Betting app, in the App Store or Google Play Store. Use that promo code SGPN. All right. We're talking win, build your own bets. We, uh, we still. Do you have the buzz? Do you have some sort of construction equipment we can? Come on. <laughs> I will do the manual. We're, we're in, we're in. <laughs> no, I do not have. Uh, I, I do not have any. Uh, we need construction some, sound effects. We, right we need some good. Uh, again, the wind. Here's here, uh, this is the only. I want a dick rubbed on me tonight. So sorry. Is that, <laughs> that's the only. Uh, that was the only what? one I can. I'll say turn that. that the, turn that drop no. out. Sir, I'll say that for the Vegas lifestyle uh, show, Ryan. Where did that come from? <laughs> uh, Oh, that is an old school one. That is Ryan doing an impression of a, a girl at a club. Uh, and he was just saying like, that these girls dress up like, uh, you know, I want to dig on me tonight. So 
And uh, shout out to us. I think we were doing a live show from a hotel room for mm. that one. So, yeah, I mean. Uh, We've come a long <laughs> way. How the mighty holy, have grown. Holy crap. We used to just uh, hold up a, a tarp in the background, and that was our, <laughs> our Vegas shows. And now we're in the beautiful Windbed studio, Ryan. We, we did have what that a journey. one year where we had our own backdrop in the hotel room for yes. photos. Shout out. Dick Olson was there without teeth. Yeah. Oh, man. All right. Long, long time coming. All right. Win, bet, build your own bet. I'll let uh, Terrell fire off your. Uh, I got one that's about twenty to one. I think it's like nineteen. Oh what? No, now you just made me. No, I don't want to go anymore because I only need nine to one. I'll go first. Nine to one. I, I yeah, got, all I right. Got. I need more. Terrell, need... this is a gambling. I know. Show. I know. I'm sorry. Nine to one. I thought that was a reasonable amount. <laughs> okay, we we no. literally. I mean, uh, the reason you're here. Hashtag Dejans only. Because you are the czar of crafting ridiculous yes. value right. out of long shot. I, I take your time. I got one. I'll lead off. Oh. And I'm gonna set the stage. And shout out to the win for letting me know that while my bet is in the uh, in the cart on the on the ticket, the odds have changed in my favor. So I love that win bet. Yes, sir. Here, here's my one. I'll keep it simple. Rams win the game. Isaiah McKenzie. Sorry, hit that accent. Isaiah McKenzie to score a touchdown. Ben Scournick to score a touchdown. That bastard. That well, rat bastard Ben well, Scournick, Ryan? Wait for he it. He owes the say grand. He does, and he's going to pay me back right now because this, <laughs> this beautiful parlay pays plus 5735. That's 57.35 to 1. Oh, my God. You, you, know, you I can was, buy a lot of miter saw, saws with that kind of coin. <laughs> uh, I was going to throw Scournick in there, but I couldn't tell it, where starting. we at with Scournick. He's starting. He's a starting third receiver. He's, he's playing it above Van Jefferson. This guy does have uh, touchdown value, oh. but uh, I, all right. So I'm keeping it a little simpler. I took uh, Josh Allen over 36 and a half rushing yards. Again, Josh Allen, big game, Josh. Yep. I mean, he was putting up like 60 a game in the playoffs. I think this, this game, it's opening night. It's a, it's a big game. The bills fans are going to be going nuts. You're telling me he's just going to sit back there and not run for a first down, mm -hmm. not run to put it in. Like talking about Josh Allen. Uh, I'm also on the bills. As part of this win bet, build your own bet at minus six and a half. I think they get it done, and I think they get it done 27 to 20. So they cover this six and a half. And I'm with you, Ryan. Uh, I what a prediction. 27 20. It fit right, right. What, what you needed. I like Exactly. Yeah. What am I going to do? I'm going to give out a I win like bet, that. build your own bet, and then say, oh, you know, uh, it Bills may be win. a loser. Bills win 24, 23, but I still like this. No, 27, 20. Although I did bet on bills. Uh, I went big on the money line. Cause I, I could see them winning with the last second field goal, but I'm taking bills minus six and a half in the win bet, build your own bet. Okay. And then Isaiah McKenzie, anytime touchdown that yeah. pays 20 uh, to one, right? Ryan, how have we, and I, and I'm going to blame Terrell. I'm going to blame myself. I'm going to blame Kramer. How did we not know Isaiah McKenzie's nickname is little dirty. That is an awesome <laughs> ass nickname for a slot receiver. He's going to, by all accounts, have the Cole Beasley role, a role that we've seen be productive in this Bills offense. I mean, Cole Beasley, um, it, it's funny he's being replaced by a guy called Little Dirty because Cole Beasley was the rapper. Is it Little Dirty or Lil Dirty? Um, it's L I L apostrophe dirty. Okay. Which Lil. yeah, it's Lil. I Terrell lo says it better than I, he's a he's a smaller gentleman, <laughs> but I, I think this dude has some dog, dog in him. And uh, I think he's going to get in the end zone. So uh, Isaiah McKenzie, anytime touchdown cool. bills minus six and a half, Josh Allen over 36 and a half rush yards. That pays 20 to one. Isaiah Ms. McKenzie quote to be featured in the game plan. Yeah. So let's go. I I'll take credit for <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah McKenzie seeing how my podcast dropped first NFL gambling podcast. Oh, it, it little, we got shameless little plug, shameless little plug there. But I gave out Isaiah McKenzie for any time touchdown at plus two eighty and two touchdowns at twenty two to one. So <laughs> it's of course that I have to throw Isaiah McKenzie into the win bet, yeah. build your own bet because of that. So Isaiah McKenzie any time touchdown, of course. That's not bad at all that all three of us said he's scoring tonight. No, so that's not, not bad at all. Not putting the kibosh on him. But I'm also going to tack on 30-plus extra yards to it. Like I said, like you said, he's the slot receiver, and guess who doesn't go into the slot? That was the slot. Their best receiver, I mean, their best corner, Jalen Ramsey. He doesn't travel into the slot. Into the slot. He actually plays one side of the field. Yes. So I don't expect him ever to get that to Jalen Ramsey matchup. And this opportunity for him to be able to cook, I think he's probably going to be one of the better receivers in this game. So – 
He's going to be the reason I win a million dollars in the, in the lineup, <laughs> showdown lineup today. And you guys gave out a showdown lineup over we did. on the NFL Gambling Podcast. And, hey, catch up. We gave out our NFL Picks Podcast. Again, 11 years in a row, giving out every NFL game against the spread completely free of charge. Yep. Check that out. And the College Football Picks a Week 2 episode. Tons of, tons of winners in there. And there's games tomorrow night as well. Football is just in, it's just, it's just hundred percent football. Huge, it feels amazing. Huge overlay opportunity in those episodes. Yes. Huge overlay. Massive yeah. overlay. Yeah. And, and in our contest, I know Derek and uh, the circle like to brag about their overlay. Our overlay, while not bigger uh, number wise, certainly <laughs> percentage. <laughs> it's a hundred percent. It's, it's infinity no, it, yeah, EV you. ride. Yeah. We found the infinity EV play. Yeah. Why are we not tweeting out hashtag infinity EV Gambling Twitter. Next year, we fucked up. Uh, we did. All right. Uh, this is terrifying. First touchdown. I'm sticking to my guns, even though me and every Joe Q public is on the same play. Uh, WinBet has it at uh, 14 to 1. Best price uh, I could find is on the great win bet. Dawson Knox, first touchdown. We know the, the storyline. He's going to be fired up for this game. He's going to be involved in the game plan. Yep. And again, they used him a lot in the red zone previously. Uh-huh. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets involved here. He is a road warrior. Nine touchdowns last year. Six of those came on the road. This is Dawson Knox time. This is Dawson Knox. This is just a great Dawson Knox spot. So a tight end at 14-1 to one that's going to be involved in the red zone, that's going to be involved in the passing game, feels like the right price for me. So I'm in on Dawson Knox. What about you, Kramer? Well, uh, real quick, before Dawson Knox, I got the, the text. I got the text uh-oh. from the plug at win. Uh-oh. Plug at win sent me yes. the text. He said... Win bet's most bet player prop for Thursday night football <laughs> is Dawson Knox to score the first oh touchdown. <laughs> so let me let me first apologize to Win Bet for uh, for bankrupting your company when me <laughs> and everyone else hits Dawson Knox at fourteen to one. Let's go, baby! All right, Sean, you ready for this? I'm ready. All right, we got uh, we got a little. You know what I like to do? I like to yep. chop chop my unit up and spread my unit across four dudes. All to score the I first forgot, touchdown. I forgot Ryan refused to give out full unit uh, plays on these. I, I'm not a full unit guy. Uh, I like, like I said, I like to chop my unit up. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's start with the Rams. You know, two, two, two guys from each team. We're going to go Ben Scourinick again, starting 25 to, uh, to 1, score first touchdown. We're also going to go Tyler Higby, 16 to 1. Good price for the tight end. So I'm getting two guys that will be on the field in the red zone, I think. Yeah. Uh, both north of, of 15 to 1. Well, are you worried at... at I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, uh, the, I'm not worried about anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remind, remember Ryan, you're mad, mad at Sean Glenn and not at me. Um, I, are you worried <laughs> slightly about the, uh, Tyler Higby getting his knee cleaned up? That was the only thing. Normally I'm all over the tight ends. You mm-hmm. know me, but I, the Tyler Higby knee cleanup thing scared me slightly off. Of yeah. Me. And it, I mean, it's a, it's a numbers game, right? What I'm not, you, I'm not yeah. taking Coop, it's, uh, Coop, Cooper. Cooper cup at six to one. I'm not taking cam Akers at nine 50. I'm not taking Allen Robinson at 11 to one. So I'm starting the game at, at, at something like Henderson or Higby. And so I'm, I'm going to take Higby. I do think that they're going to look to attack through the air. Yeah. The more that I dive into this game. So uh, yeah. Could he not be on the field? Maybe a late pivot to another tight end. Sure. But it's the tight end. We're playing the tight end position. All right. Bills. Why is Josh Allen 12 to one? Yeah. Why, why are we, yeah. Josh Allen should yeah. be eight to yes, one. Sir. We learned this last year, guys, you, the running quarterbacks, we're going to blindly take them uh, in prime time for a while here. It seems because 12 to one's the wrong price. So we're going Josh Allen. We're going to pair him up with who Isaiah McKenzie, 20 to one yep. again, mm-hmm. heavily involved in the game plan. This is the way to play it. And I'd add one nugget to your uh, Dawson Knox take. I do. I think the way I'm going to play Dawson Knox is anytime. Yeah. Plus yeah, one, maybe that's yeah. it. Plus 185 for a guy who. They're going to go out know, of their way to get him looks, right? Whatever it may be, he's going to be involved. And I think, would they love to get him a touchdown? Maybe we're, maybe we're a Joe Q public over here sitting behind the counter is overthinking what a touchdown might mean to him in this kind of moment. But it does seem like they're going to do something, like try to get him involved. He was a touchdown guy last year, right? Yeah. He wasn't a volume catch guy. I don't know if I'm looking to play his yardage or catch props, but anytime touchdowns is super sneaky. And, and maybe even I'd go a step further. Like maybe he's a guy that we play two touchdowns on. Mm. So uh, versus the first touchdown. So yeah, 185 for that. Yeah, that I mean, that's interesting because nice. what do you think has a better shot? Dawson Knox, two touchdowns or Dawson Knox, first touchdown? To me, I would rather take the first touchdown because 
if he's getting two touchdowns, there's a decent chance one of them is the first. Well, you, and I you, think the price is actually kind of similar, right? You got the other team, though. That's, yeah. That's the oh, that's true, too. Yeah. So, all I, right. The idea of the Rams scoring hasn't really come into my brain Be yet. Be careful. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I You know, again, never has a Super Bowl champion been a underdog week one the following season. Uh, Bills Mafia DJ 92 in the YouTube chat saying, fullback, first touchdown alert, Reggie Gilliam. Yeah. 100 oh, to 1. Damn it. All right. Oh my God. So part of me thought you were going to throw him out. Yeah. And so I. Hey, it's still one more in the booth here. Oh, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's get hey, Terrell's take on the first the touchdown. Mojo. You're still in the mojo oh, here. I apologize, Terrell. Yes, because I've already given out plays. Again, NFL Gambling Podcast. Make sure y'all. Whoa. Hey, you know, we're, we're, we're battling here. We're battling here. But I decided to give out the DJ plays here for you, all, for you all. So, yeah, Reggie Gilliam was one. Oh, the fullback yeah, I mean, touchdown. You got, you got to. And then Matthew Stafford to oh. quarterback sneak on the half yard line. Matthew Stafford <laughs> slides it in. I don't know. I mean, hey, it could be fun. He's one of those guys who will get penetration. What's, yeah. his, what's uh, Stafford at? What's his I first? see him at 45 to 1 right oh, now. Oh, man. I'm a sucker for quarterback first touchdown yeah. props, even with guys. Even with guys that don't do it. Yeah, they still, no. Now, how many rushing touchdowns did he have last year? 0.0. 0. <laughs> Stafford's on the do not play list. For, uh, there are a couple that just like, Sean, have I, no value. If I'm not playing a quarterback first touchdown, yeah. it's not playable. <laughs> but it is a long I hope price. he does it just to show him up. Yeah, that's going to No, be but ser- on a serious note, Isaiah McKenzie, I'm telling you with yeah. that, I definitely, I've talked up Isaiah McKenzie enough this episode. I just, I think that this is the weak point in that Rams defense is the slot corner. And so I think he could have a really big game. Josh yeah. Allen, the running quarterback, I just see. Yeah. He has an opportunity yeah. every single play to run the ball in. He's, he's still the goal line back. Yeah, and so I don't think that they trust Devin Singletary or Zach Moss, and I'm not sure they're going to put a rookie out there. So, yeah, I like Josh Allen to go out there and get a first touchdown. And then I split the other two up between the two second receivers who both have something to prove in Gabriel Davis and Allen Robinson and just saying that, hey, now it's our turn to be that guy. Everybody's shitting on Alvin Rob- Allen Robinson saying that, hey, this isn't the Bears – you're not going to be a part of this offense. He's the second wide receiver in a Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay offense. He's going to be noteworthy throughout the whole season. So, yeah, Allen Robinson and Gabe Davis, mm. both of them, they're both about 10 to 1. I Look mean, at you. That Reggie Gilliam uh, first touch. You guys gave out multiple. So, I'll, I will add. What do you mean we gave out multiple? You gave out. I gave out one unit. Yeah, it was <laughs> one gave, unit. Gave, it was see, one unit. Okay. <laughs> I'm just putting my one unit on Don, Dawson Knox. Dawson. <laughs> I believe in you. You think Dawson shock, can handle shock, your unit? Shock, shock. Yeah, oh, he can. Uh, little nugget for you, Terrell. Last time Matthew Stafford had a rushing touchdown, <laughs> what year was it? Oh, man. Uh, let's go with 2019. 2019. 17? Oh, 19? Mm. I don't know. I'm just guessing, too. What's the answer? <laughs> 2016 was the last oh, time Matt Stafford had a rushing touchdown. Damn. I was close. All right. So 50 to 1 is actually a horrible price. Yeah, it's actually a really bad price. Don't <laughs> it happens <laughs> once every five, twice a decade. Yes. All right. Uh, How what hilarious else? if he scores a touchdown today. Hey, uh, what else do we got? Oh, we got, sleeper. We yeah. got Malcolm coming up. We got our sleeper team uh, uh, picks for that as well. Some bonus. We already gave one out, Ryan, but why not some more sleeper action? Before we get to that, shout out to Fubo TV. That's right. Fubo TV gives you complete coverage of college and pro football, NFL Red Zone, games in 4K at no extra charge. Over 100 channels of live sports and entertainment for a fraction of the price of cable. Watch on all your devices and never miss a game or an episode of your favorite show with the cloud based DVR. No contract, no commitment. You can cancel anytime, but why would you want to? Uh, Fubo TV, free for seven days and 15% off your first month. Just go to FuboTV.com slash SGP. That's FuboTV.com slash SGP. We're also brought to you by PromoGuide.us. Uh, for all you betters out there, again, uh, you want to increase your bankroll, you want to get create some plus EV opportunities, PromoGuide.us has you covered. You get the biggest bonuses from all the best sports books in the country. We're talking $1,000 risk-free deposits, insane odd boosts, and most importantly, the best analytics in the business. Uh, tons of free picks as well. Bet smarter, not harder with promoguy.us. All right, and here we go with our sleeper. Uh, we already gave one out, Ryan, but why not another one? And uh, I know I've already put mine in, so you can just go to sleeper.com SGP if you want to copy any of our picks. 
You can just hit copy and uh, decide your bet amount. You can win 2x all the way up to 20x, depending, on obviously, how many you put in. And, again, the, the integrated um, over-under with the fantasy is it. you really have to see it. Uh, sleeper.com slash SGP, 100% deposit bonus up to $100. Promo code SGP. Kramer, I'll let you go first. What do you got for your uh, three-teamer here? It's literally like putting uh, something that the uh, the icy truck shouldn't be selling in the icy truck and, and just making it too easy to get to. Devin Singletary under 46 and a half rushing yards. Just uh, looking to fade Devin Singletary in the first mm. game. Looking to really? fade the rushing attack overall. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but I think they're going to struggle to run into this Rams front. So. I don't think it's going to be the preferred method of attack. So you don't think it's a – it's not your high on James Cook. You just think they're going to have trouble running the ball? I would probably lean under on everyone's yardage total that isn't Josh Allen. Yeah. Um, just because of how this team has played as well. Obviously, Brian Dable no longer there, so there are some unknowns. <laughs> but uh, second leg, Took Isaiah – Took a while. Isaiah McKenzie over. God help everyone when this oh. offense looks like shit. Oh, just my Brian God. Did they, go, did they go three and out? <laughs> All right, Isaiah McKenzie over 30 and a half receiving yards. He gets this with three catches, maybe four. One. Uh, or one, mm, big one. one. And then we got Ben Scourneck, 21 and a half receiving yards. Again, he's the third receiver in three receiver sets. Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup are out there. Who do you think they're going to cover? Ben Scourneck over 21 and a half receiving yards. Again, uh, all in. I, and, Never and, doing any of that head shit. And we like Scourneck. We really do. It's annoying um, that I like Scourneck. He fought, he did screw us out of a lot of money. In 10, the Super Bowl. 10 grand. I think we had, if he was somehow the first touchdown and he should of have the been. first of the game. And what did we also have first touchdown of the second I, half? Right? I think it was, la it might've been first touchdown each half. I thought it was first and last. Oh, okay. We might've had first and last. Cause we wanted, we were like, if for some reason he doesn't hit the first touchdown, we want to <laughs> give ourselves <laughs> options for the second half to convince us Ben Scourneck. Dude, he gets looks. Real gets DJ looks. move, creating multiple outs through multiple bets. Like <laughs> It's the Super Bowl, man. You, you, you just got to, you know, load up. All right, uh, Terrell, Mr. Furman, what do you have for a sleeper three-teamer? Oh, it's a four-teamer. Uh, okay. Yes. It was originally a three-teamer, but then they said I had to pick somebody from the other team, so I had to throw another pick in there. <laughs> <laughs> Makes an, sense. All right. Jameson Crowder, under 19 and a half yards. Mm. Somebody's got to be the odd man out, and it's not Isaiah McKenzie, so of course it's going to be Jameson Crowder. I have no idea what his role is going to be in this offense. I'm not taking any chances on it. Give me the under 19 and a half for him. Over 30 and a half, Isaiah McKenzie. Yeah. I think we beat that into the head. Yep. Dawson Knox, over three and a half receptions. You oh, know, I'm, I I'm like fading that. the yards. Fading the yards. If they're going to give him the looks, then they're going to give him targets. And he can come down with the ball. And then give me Cooper Cup over 89 and a half yards. I, it's awfully I low. I feel like, <laughs> I, no, it's very low. I but <laughs> I feel like we haven't been talking about Cooper Cup enough just because it's like, oh, well, it's Cooper Cup. Like, he's always going to be boring. good. Yeah. Well, honestly, every time I've drafted from like the three or four spot, you find reasons to not take him to. It's like, ah, yeah. Yeah, but he's still going to be good. He's I mean, in the 80s, that was an auto over last year. I mean, think about what he was doing last yeah. year. Yeah. So. No, his, I think his right. player I, totals didn't get as high as like 90 something. I'm going to have to copy that one, Terrell. Yeah, that was a good one, Terrell. Yep. Uh, all right. So I, I had one with Dawson Knox over three and a half receptions that I've already placed on Sleeper. Mm -hmm. Ryan talked me out of it. So, <laughs> and on to Ben Scourneck because again, 21 and a half is, is comically low for Scour. So give me Ben Scourneck over 21 and a half Scow dog. What's his nickname? He needs, we need to come up with a Ben Scourneck nickname. Uh, Matt Stafford under 24 and a half completions. Like you look through the second half of that season and even some of the playoff games, like he's not as efficient as you, you might think. I think they're going to, and also just like the elbow, the back, all that stuff. How is he just going to come out and complete 70%? I'm, I'm just skeptical. Um, and maybe he completes some easy stuff to Cooper Cup and he gets some yards after the catch. But completion-wise, to get to 25, that's pretty high. So I'm, I'm taking the under there. And then uh, Jamison Crowder, under 18 and a half receiving yards. Like, there's just so many other options. Diggs, Davis, McKenzie, Knox, like the running backs out of the backfield. Yeah. Josh Allen, I I just don't think Jamison Crowder, now that it's clear McKenzie beat him out for the third spot, I just, I, I know I know the Bills like working in vets, but I think Jamison Crowder is just going to be the odd man out here. So under 18 and a half. 
Or he's the guy that uh, is really the third guy, and it's not Isaiah McKenzie. So <laughs> and then we're all in trouble. Hey, that would liter- I would be in the sports book about to shit myself. Isn't that kind of a correlate? <laughs> you can kind of do a correlated one where you take over McKenzie under. Yeah, Crowder. that's what I did. Yeah, I mean that that's that it feels like a correlated result. That's not, nice work. Positive EV. Positive move. EV. Positive there. Thank EV. You. Yes, sir. We are we are less than three hours from live bullets in the air. Yes, sir. Do we have a. Do we, have, we need a countdown. It's and, so hard being out here because I have no idea what time the game yeah. starts. Like, what time does the game start? Five thirty. Five fifteen. Okay, five fifteen. Like five fifteen. Okay. Five fifteen. But you know. oh, okay, three hours. Three hours. All right. See. All right. We ready to. Uh, we ready to bring in Malcolm. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do, do. Uh, well, appreciate you coming in, uh, Terrell. For as sure. always, follow Terrell on Twitter at really rel. Double underscore. Yes, sir. NFL Gambling Podcast. He's going to be uh, doing the pregame show with Colby. Mm-hmm. Just did a uh, bonus college football experience podcast. Mm-hmm. The guy's all over the network. Did you mention WNBA? WNBA Gambling oh, Podcast. Oh, yeah. We are, WNBA Conference Finals, right? Yeah, we are We are in the semifinals. Finals start on Sunday. So Sunday is a huge day. Sunday is a huge day, just so you know. We're going to get some WNBA uh, NFL parlays. Brian, is the site ready to handle the WNBA traffic we expect Sunday? I'll have the team. Wow. Okay. If, I, if it crashes, I know who to blame because <laughs> all, all of my supporters are coming. Oh, yeah. They're going to be there. Well, all right, that's it. Awesome, right. man. And, and, yep. and, and, yeah, Saturday morning, uh, we're going to be coming to you live from the studio here. Yes. We, talking college football. We will be doing a live pregame college football show, Colby Dant. Uh, as well, Terrell, the whole crew, uh, breaking down, getting you ready for college kickoff on Saturday. Hey, guys, still time to get in our free NFL Survivor Contest over on Run Your Pool. We're teaming up with Run Your Pool. Again, if you've never run a uh, football pool on Run Your Pool, you are missing out. It is the one-stop shop when it comes to customizing your football pool, pick them, Survivor, whatever. They have you covered. I've, I've run pools over on Run Your Pool for years. And... Our free NFL Survivor Contest. Get in now. Uh, You still have time. Play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. That's play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. $500 cash and a $250 gift certificate to the winner. It is winner take all. You're competing against Kramer and I, uh, the rest of the SGPN DGENs. And again, very easy, very fun, and uh, the perfect tool for running your pool. If you're listening to the show, you're probably the guy running your pool. Play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. Play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. Last but not least, Odds Trader. That's right. Odds Trader is your one-stop shop. If you're looking to shop around live odds, uh, find some of the best sign-up codes and promos. They got you covered there. Player stats, game stats, injury reports, projected game day weather. They got it all. Plus, uh, the bet tracker. Highly recommend firing up the bet tracker. Odds Trader is your one-stop shop when it comes to gambling. OddsTrader.com slash BlueWire. O-D-D-S Trader.com slash BlueWire. Joining us in studio now, the man, the myth, the legend, all the way from across the pond, (laughs) Mr. Malcolm Bamford. Malcolm, thanks for coming on the show, man. You are very welcome. How are you doing? Doing great. Um, well, first off, apologies to the queen. I know it was, uh, it's probably a tough day for you. She cashed the over about <laughs> 10 years ago, so yeah, she's good. She hit the over. <laughs> uh, Kramer and I, uh, we were talking to uh, the soccer, uh, other soccer guy, Billy, and he's saying they're, they've shut down sports for two weeks in England? Well, the last thing the Queen has done for me this weekend, she's bought me about four hours sleep on a Saturday <laughs> morning because I was going to get up at seven in the morning to watch a Newcastle game, which has now been called off. So the Queen's bought me a couple of hours. Okay, quick, so she's helping needed. you get your rest by yes. canceling all these games. First off, we got we to gotta talk about you making it well, out here quick, to though. Las Vegas. Can you imagine the revolt if the NFL week one and week two got oh. canceled? We would, I mean... What would happen? We would burn the burn the city down. Burn it all down. Yeah, it would, it would be a complete... Fire everyone. Yeah. We're, Can we're, I give you one quick queen stat that sure. I just picked up outside? What's the queen stat of the day? The queen was on the throne for 30% of the time that America has existed as a country. <laughs> wow. I mean, come on. Hats yes, off. Uh, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's a crazy run. That's an Elias that's uh, Sports run. Bureau <laughs> stat if I've ever heard one. Uh, so, all right. Now, what you're coming from, uh, describe where you're coming from. And, <laughs> no, no, just, you know what? 
you know, like a different point in time. Ryan has the Google Maps of of Malcolm's journey. Wait, just walk us through your entire day of getting from England to uh, Las Vegas, because it's quite the journey. The map that Ryan has is not representative of what I actually did, because that goes in a straight line. So, <laughs> um, it went from Newcastle to Amsterdam first. So Newcastle's northeast coast of England. Newcastle across to Amsterdam was delayed. Um, luckily, the flight from Amsterdam to LAX was also delayed. So, so uh, England to Amsterdam, what's that? Or Newcastle, what's the, what's the flight there? 50 minutes. 50 minutes. Okay, yeah. nice easy flight. Up and down, no problem. Um, the flight was delayed from Amsterdam, which meant I caught it. Happy with that. So then 10 hours from Amsterdam wow. to LAX. Um, again, enjoyed that. Enjoyed looking out the window. I was telling you boys <laughs> last night, I saw lots of little towns and cities that I recognized from minor league baseball teams and <laughs> old cowboy songs. So I was having a lovely time. Um, got to LAX. Vegas flights gone. All the Vegas flights have gone. Wow. I phoned Ryan. I said, I've missed a flight. He said, don't worry. There's dozens of flights. Yeah. There wasn't dozens of flights. <laughs> there was no flights is what there was. So the lady suggested that I get back on a flight to Salt Lake City. No, yeah, you're both shaking your heads. No. I don't so, know. so how long have you been there's traveling no now? Like 12 hours already? Um, 12 hours in the air. Yeah. Plus the sundries either side. So yeah, 14, 15 hours maybe. Um, back to Salt Lake City. And then back to Vegas. Ryan talked me down off that one. Very <laughs> sensibly. Well done. Um, so then I had no option but to stay in LA overnight until um, the, I overheard three kids talking about... Because they were in the same boat as me. They were stuck. And I over them, overheard them saying they were going to rent a car and drive from LA to Vegas. So I tapped him on the shoulder. I said, are you driving to Vegas? <laughs> said, yeah. I said, can I get in? Yeah. So, I, so, <laughs> so you, and obviously you don't know these guys. They're just three guys that you're eavesdropping that were in a yeah, similar yeah. situation. I was just eavesdropping. So three Danish kids, um, shout out to Ronnie and Peter <laughs> and the other bloke. I can't remember his name. Let's call him Sven. Shout out to the other bloke. Yeah. The other bloke. Um, so the, so at 2 a.m. this morning, me and three Danish strangers were barreling through the desert. <laughs> And they pulled up, they just took me straight to the front of my hotel. They didn't stop at their own place, straight into the Valley of Parking. So I'm, Denmark is now my second favorite <laughs> yes. nation. Um, Thank so, you for participating in the Sports Game of yeah. August. So when we start getting loads of uh, downloads from Copenhagen next week, you know Shout you've got out. me to thank so, you. So now what, uh, total travel time, you're looking at 24 hours probably? More, 26, 27. Oh my God. And then he... And then he hung out. We had, 6, we had 000, some drinks. 6,442 <laughs> miles is what I, a rough estimate of how yeah. many miles that uh, Malcolm traveled. I, I think, but, now, that, but, but that's just, I mean, we haven't completed the story yet. No, keep going. Because you're in Vegas now. Yeah. You're getting ready to get your room. Got to the hotel. Oh, my God. Couldn't <laughs> check in. They wouldn't let me check in because I didn't have um, the. It was a whole clusterfuck. Fuck, yeah. uh, sh fuck the unnamed uh, hotel uh, company that didn't do us any. Yeah, Any, uh, complete, complete, uh, and you had to come over here, and we helped. It was, uh, it, it, the journey continues, but then I see a tweet that you're up at, what was it, 9 a.m.? 9 a.m. To watch yeah. baseball and grind yeah. it out? So eventually, I got in my room at one minute past three, and you know, I mean, I dragged my legs back up that strip last <laughs> night. Um, Walking I, around at, like, it's still, like, uh, 100 degrees even yeah. at night here. It's insane. So when I got into my room at one minute past three, after that 28-hour journey, do you think... I threw my bags down and crawled into bed. <laughs> or do you think I did a complete 180 and went straight and had an hour's blackjack? Because <laughs> that is the answer. And I won $47. Hashtag only. <laughs> Malcolm, you're the king. Well, we actually... well hold on, because what's funny is, well, Malcolm, when you left, I went up to the room. Uh, I, so, uh, I might have come back down as well to play a little blackjack <laughs> really? last night. All by myself at the double-deck table. Uh, lost a ridiculous amount of money oh, in like nine minutes. It was the, uh, I went back to my room shamefully. Do we, uh, and, and shout out to Josh, uh, worked up an amazing Photoshop of, uh, Malcolm. If, oh, wow. If the studio can, uh, <laughs> pull up the image, I got, I got it loaded onto my computer here in one of these tabs. So hopefully they can pull it up here. Have I seen this? I don't know if you've seen it, Malcolm. Okay. Oh, I got to click over. All right. There we oh, go, yes, <laughs> Malcolm. Uh, fear and loathing in Las Vegas. You got any any crazy stories from the Danes? Like, what were those guys? Uh... No, two of them were uh, football hooligans. I think from um, 
Bronby was their team okay. in Denmark, which uh, uh, is outside Copenhagen. <laughs> uh, so there's a couple of football hooligans. They, they were real D-gens, I got the impression. They were sweating out a, a $1,000 parlay when we were on the plane <laughs> on the um, Champions League. And they won it in the 99th minute. Well, football last night, uh, soccer, sorry, last 90 <laughs> minutes, if you know anything about it. So to score a 99th minute, uh, they were up in the back row of the aeroplane punching the air. Um, so I knew I was in kind of good hands when I tapped them up for a lift. That's um, how it works. DJ's helping DJ's, Sean. Yes, Absolutely. Exactly. And of course, obviously, this week's nominee <laughs> SGPN presents Real Men of DJ's. Real Men of DJ's. <laughs> we salute you. Malcolm Bamford, the first to ever accept the uh. award in person. <laughs> Traveling 6,500 miles, 27 hours, just to play some blackjack and hang out in the WinBet studio. That is a true hashtag digits only. Sorry if I've ever heard it. I think Malcolm will travel more on his trip to Las Vegas than the Steelers travel their entire yes. season. The, the Steelers are only being held to one time zone. Malcolm just crushed six just to hang out and be a true DJ. For that, we salute you, Malcolm. This week's winner of Real Men of DJs. Thank you. Bush. <laughs> I, I can hear the applaud coming from the green room. I mean, I, just what's funny is we were taught, we were kind of talking about what was happening to you in the moment. And Terrell had this, had this look of like, he came to a new country and got in a car with a bunch yes. of strangers <laughs> and drove to another state. Like you're just already process you're, that. You're already up huge for the trip. Just in the fact that you took this long shot bet of three random strangers yeah. and uh, arrived alive and well. So uh, I think you're already, you're already up for the trip, Ryan. Um, we get questions all the time. This is Malcolm's first trip out to Las Vegas. He's taken to it like a fish in water. I'm sure he has a better uh, English expression, um, but we always get questions. What are some tips? What are some tricks for Vegas? I got a huge list here, but I don't know if you want to go back and forth with tips. Uh, you want to go first, Ryan? What do you got? Uh, I think step one, it's before you even get here. Don't be the guy who's trying to plan a whole weekend. Yes. That's, that's it, on here's here. the thing. Vegas has lots of things to distract you. Yep. You plan dinner. That's it. You're coming out here for a bachelor party. You plan yep. a dinner and a strip club, maybe, and that's it. Don't, don't be the asshole. It's like, we're going to go drive fast cars at 2 p.m. <laughs> and tomorrow we're going to go shoot guns in the desert. No, don't do any of that. It's bullshit. The sports book's here. Vegas the casino's is, here. Yeah. Where are you going? I mean, the, even if you want to get a massage, that's here too. There's no reason to leave. Don't be an asshole. And oh, by the way, secondary thing, it's hot as shit. Mm, think about accepting that golf invitation. Yeah, golf. Uh, all these other activities you can do in Vegas. Vegas is You can the do them everywhere. Vegas is the activity hanging out in Vegas <laughs> is what you come to Vegas to do to just, you know, be drinking Jameson and gingers at, at two o'clock in the afternoon and, you know, pulling massive plugs of chaw and just hanging out in the sports book. Like, you don't want to have an agenda. If you have an itinerary, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Maybe one night you meet up for a dinner. Um, but that's really all you need. Like, Hey, we're going to watch the games here. That's it. If for example. Yes. Today. Okay. We're doing a show at two 30. Yep. We're watching the game at five. That was it. Other than that, free time. Uh, that was it, right? Free time. Freestyle afterwards. <laughs> Don't have a plan. Don't be silly. Yes. All right. So some etiquette here. Ooh. I always like to, uh, when placing bets, you can do the mobile uh, wagering. You got to sign up at the sports book. I'm a paper tickets guy. I love the mojo of the tickets. I love the energy. And I also love going up. A, a lot of places got rid of it, but a lot of places, shout out to the win. Uh, shout out to the Circa. You go up there, you place your bets, you get free drink tickets. All right, I'm a sucker for some free drink tickets. I'm going up there. I'm physically putting them in, and you get you get higher limits too. Let's say you're trying to bet the Houston Texans uh, division winner. They they probably limit your payout at the uh, if you do the kiosk. You can go up there, talk to a real person, and when cashing your bets, always tip those people that are paying you out. It's it's not something that you would think you would have to tip, but it is great gambling mojo to tip those people. Ryan always makes fun of me. I'll bet like 200 bucks on a game, let's say, and I'll bet exactly 200. Ryan will bet, you know, if it's minus 110, I'll bet 220 to win 200. I bet 200 partially because I like having those loose dollars and spare change when I go 
to cash in because then I can tip the person. You hear that? You hear that sound? That's the sound of your EV going down the drain. <laughs> I mean, look, it's funny enough because the time the, I will tip when it's a horse bet. Yes. <laughs> Which is hilarious because that's the worst EV bet well, out and, there. And, but. And, uh, and also, too, so you, uh, you get a player's card at any casino you go. When you place your sports bets, swipe the player's card because uh, if for whatever reason you lose the paper ticket, they're able to recover it and you're good to go. Shout out to Terrell, who <laughs> lost his paper ticket. He luckily took a picture of it. Now he says they basically locked the ticket, so if it hits, no one can cash it in. But they told him, uh, and this was across the street, they told him the recovery process of the ticket, if it pays out, is approximately a calendar year. So <laughs> save yourself. And it's, you're, you're drinking, you're hanging out, you got shit ton in your pockets. It's, it's not unheard of to misplace a ticket. So swipe the player's card to uh, keep you covered there. If you want to be on the grid. Uh, so this is a good point, because I was talking about it with Malcolm last night. Uh, coming to Vegas, you're a guy you can gamble over, over across the pond, no problem, on your app. Are you coming for the paper ticket experience? Love a paper ticket. Ah. Absolutely. That's what I was brought up on. And the online stuff, obviously, the bookmaking industry in the UK, it's kind of died on its arse a little bit. Every high street had a load of bookies on, and they just don't anymore because everyone bets online and stuff. Um, my one tip that I've picked up so far would be to not lose the boss's credit card <laughs> within 11 hours of landing in... Um, not, only. not that I'm breaking some bad news to your eye, but... Um, yeah, I don't someone's know what's on a shopping spree right yeah, now. Yeah, someone, someone's going nuts on uh, Ryan's card. As uh, long as it's a long shot first touchdown. Yes. So, and, I'll and appreciate that. that. Hydration, oh, again, we cannot we stress hydration enough. You think like, oh, you know, drink, drink a little water. No. ABH, always be hydrating. You're in a desert climate. One, as soon as you step foot in your room, call down for a humidifier. They will send you up a humidifier to your room. It's going to be a game changer. You, you get dried out so crazy here in the desert. I'm a liquid IV guy. I got the liquid IVs. I get a case of waters. Um, that, this is the other thing. Walgreens is a lifesaver. There's a Walgreens on the strip. Don't go to CVS. CVS doesn't have smokes, um, and their beer selection sucks. Walgreens, amazing. Uh, their, their cold drink selection is insane. You can get bottled waters. You can get liquid IVs. You can get all that stuff, and you can get snacks for the room, get some pretzels, get some, something that's going to soak up the booze to keep you going. You know, if you're an energy drink guy, um, maybe you get one of those cans of oxygen if you're a maniac. But, again, Walgreens and stay hydrated. I hit Walgreens this morning. Yeah. My recovery breakfast was two apples and a box of cheese its <laughs> uh, That's very American of you. Yes. Yeah, I, like, I was trying to fit in, wasn't I? Got a uh, hot dog, too. What, what else you got, Ryan? Uh, I mean, I think just the second you're hydrated. You got to drink water before you go to bed. It's yes. very important. I know we sound like old people, but you're going to thank <laughs> us. No, because, A, A, you're drinking way more than you normally do. Your, your adrenaline's high the entire time from all this gambling. Your heart's going to be racing through the roof for a variety of different reasons. And, um, yeah, and you're just out in the desert where it's like 115 outside. Um, so you're just going to be killed. Um, remember to eat. I know it sounds oh, stupid. Stole my number oh, one. Oh, sorry. That's all right. I'll let you take it, right? Number one pick. You have to rem You're there with friends. If you're there with the significant other, you probably have like it's kind of a different strategy. The females like to eat on a schedule, so you probably have a steady <laughs> plan of like this is where we're gonna eat breakfast. This, is where... but if you're there with your buddies, no one's checking in on you, so you need to get a check in on each other. Make sure you're saying, "Hey, did you eat breakfast? Hey, have you eaten today? Hey, uh, we've been playing craps for eight hours. Maybe we should go to get a bite of, a bite to eat. <laughs> uh, hey, it's you, you're not you're still a man if you order a fruit smoothie because the, the sugars and, and the the fruit juice it's really going to help you uh, just keep it going. It's part of the hydration process for me. Uh, it's about you know putting hydration in the air in your room, putting hydration in your body, and then eating <laughs> eating things from the earth. Right? We want to make sure we get those fruits into and 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 also smoothies are fucking good. If you're clowning me because I'm drinking <laughs> smoothies, you're just, you're just scared. You're hiding in your closet, and you're scared to come out and say smoothies are fucking good. So uh, I certainly encourage the eating. I certainly encourage the smoothies. The last thing I'd say about eating, don't, be, don't eat shit every meal. Got to be smart. Pace yourself. Working some roughage. Yeah, important like that, to get things. And Malcolm, you know, grabbing a couple apples, you, that, yeah, that goes yeah. a long way. And also it helps with the, uh, we'll call it the digestive recovery process. 
of making sure we're going through full eating cycles <laughs> and then things are working. So yes. again, it's very dry out here. It can be dry everywhere. So make sure you're eating, remind your friends to eat. Uh, they'll thank you. Uh, yeah. Got a bunch of other ones on here. Don't, don't go light on the tipping. I mean, everything in Vegas runs on tips. Everyone in Vegas working, uh, runs on tips and everyone in Vegas also wants to have a conversation and has a little hustle. You know what I mean? Like they have some sort of side hustle, whatever's going on. You got those drink tickets when you're cashing those in, make sure to tip more than you would normally at a regular bar. Then all of a sudden your pours get a little heavier. Uh, you don't need to order a double cause they'll just be hooking you up. If you're tipping them, like, uh, it, you know, when you're playing craps, tip the dealer, obviously, because they're going to keep an eye on your bets. Like stuff can go pretty fast, uh, on crap. So if you're not keeping an eye, you can miss stuff. They can maybe mispay you out if you're tipping them or also playing with them, play for them. Uh, that's always a fun move in blackjack. Play some hands for the dealer. Anytime you get blackjack auto tip to the dealer, that's how it works. And then I, when you're coloring up, you got to tip them as well. Um, just keep the tipping fast and furious. Cause that's how, that's how Vegas works. It's a, it's a tip city. All right, so let's talk about this because yeah. we did have an amazing experience last night at... Oh, uh, yes, this is great. Uh, we had a dinner at just like a regular old place, and the waiter was fucking amazing. Shout out to Anthony. Uh, he was so like so into what we want. He knew what the menu was. He wanted to ha make sure we had a good time. The, the, the fucker gave us to-go waters without even <laughs> asking. Like, he understood the, the need to hydrate. And so uh, at the end of the meal, Sean left. So I knew, all right, this is my time. I got the, I got the both hands on the tip wheel. Sean's pro tipping in Vegas. So what did I do? Guess how much oh, percentage shit. wise I tipped that guy. Wait, last night. what? <laughs> now, Ryan, I'm pro tipping. 25% is a great tip. No, really? Why did you tip this guy? Uh, about 48%. Oh, my God. It Come was on. a great you enjoyed yourself, all right? Oh I want the Giants to be good this year, so, so I'm, I'm buying some karma right now. <laughs> Dropped my first 50% tip of the season. My, my, tipping, my tipping tip comes <laughs> back to haunt me immediately as Ryan's tipping the uh, Grand well, Lux Cafe guy 48%. My God. And man. I have a follow-up because Malcolm comes from a different place. Talk to me about the tipping. This is foreign to you, right? Absolutely foreign to me. Um, culturally, we don't do it. It's your know. job, right? It's called doing your job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, we just don't do it at all. However, I'll do anything for people to like me. <laughs> I'm awful. I'm a terrible person. So I was straight into it like last night with a. I had a couple of winners on the ponies this morning, and she had a little cup on the counter. Yeah. So there's a few dollars in the cup. Um, the free drinks sitting at the table last night. I had a lovely chat to the waitress, and immediately she was on my side. Then. Like yeah. it's not oh, complicated. Yeah. Like it's a, it's almost like rule one of SGPN is don't be a dick. Like, yes, exactly. and that's a pretty decent, like it's great life advice as about. well. Yeah, don't be a dick. Show up, but I and, would take and, it further because at the tables, too, I mean, you get a lot of people that are fucking pissed off. Yeah, yeah. Because they're trying, like they're they're either trying to make money that they need or they're losing money that they need. And it's, it's crazy to me how simple it is to just have a conversation with someone. And, and here's, here's a mojo thing uh, for all the mojo believers out there. Never get mad at a dealer. Get disappointed. Uh, oh, you know, wow. It, like, let's say I got a six, uh, you know, or sorry, the dealer is a six and I got a 10, you know, so it's a, it's a, or it's a great double down situation. 11 against a six. I double down and then they pull 21 and I'll just be like, Tanya, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Don't get, because if you get mad at them, they get annoyed. Uh, if you're like, oh man, that's a bummer. Come on. And then they start like wanting to root for you. You start tipping them. It's, it, it really creates a fun energy at the table. And that's when you really have fun when the dealer's busting and everyone's high-fiving again, random conversations, everyone in Vegas is ready to have a conversation where you're from, what brings you out here. And you can meet you can meet random blokes like Malcolm. Like what? it really is a fun part of Vegas. This guy uh, came over and just randomly yes. started talking shit to Sean last <laughs> night because he was wearing an Eagles shirt. He turned out to be a Giants fan. Called him a, a complete a piece of trash, like ten words into the conversation. So very easy to start a conversation in Vegas. I think you've got to bear in mind I've got an angle in because I was a croupier for years. 
Um, yeah. I still work in the industry. So I've been the dealer who really wants to beat you if you're being a dick. It's, and you <laughs> yeah. do, like, it, I know it's just not my money at the end of the day. No, no, but, no. oh, man, like, beating that person is great. You go in the <laughs> break room. being a dick. Yeah, yeah, you go in the break room and you high five and the pick <laughs> Yeah, got him. Um, <laughs> so I've been on that side. So, yeah, just what you're saying, just be pleasant. And yeah. they will, like, and, and it, it's just karma. It's casino karma, but... It'll, what goes around comes around like and you'll come down on the right side of it i'm sure you will 100 I'll, I'll tell you a good story uh, that being nice to the dealer i may have been intoxicated and i may have gone down uh, late night to the double deck uh, high limit area which i sometimes <laughs> will may or may Dabble. not do and I, I was really drunk uh, things got bad i got pissed off and i i just left but i was, I was being cordial uh, but i was like i'm going to bed i just lost a lot of money well turns out i was so drunk i left a couple thousand dollar chips under the napkin oh my god well i had I, again i was using a player player's card i was nice <laughs> and they they tracked down my room i was staying in the hotel they tracked down my room and called me and said we have a uh, we have two thousand dollars waiting for you i'm, I'm less worried about your credit card now. <laughs> In hindsight, I could have blamed you, and you wouldn't have known. Yeah. yeah. And I've owned up this morning. Yeah. Jeez. Oh well, that's that's called being a man, Malcolm. <laughs> yeah. Fair All enough. right. Uh, if a random woman oh. approaches you and starts talking to you, and you think like, "Oh yeah, man, yeah, baby, Sean, you're just putting out the vibes. These girls really want to talk to you." It is. I mean, almost. I mean, it's very obvious. But uh, step if, one: no girl's gonna talk to a dude wearing a jersey. So no. if you're, especially if you're like Rocking watching a jersey all day and wearing a jersey. Mm. Yeah. Um, they're probably a working professional. Yeah. The, the eyelashes are a, uh, are a great <laughs> tell. They have gigantic eyelashes. A lot of them. That's a, certainly a signal. Hey, you know, whatever. If it's <laughs> flip flops, I was told last night was a sign. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, here, here's the, here, <laughs> I'll, I'll explain this. So you, what Sean's described, you have the, the, the lingers, the ones that will hang out by the bars in the nicer casinos, yeah. especially and try to, like, pick, pick off, especially during the weeknights, pick off the conference staff. The, but, guy, the guys wearing the badges are low-hanging fruit for these ladies. But you also get this, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of opportunity to have things delivered to your room in Las Vegas. Mm. So you also have this, you know, if you're, let's say you're one of these people that might sneak off and play a little blackjack. You're heading down 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning. You might find uh, some, some attractive uh, ladies wearing scan being scantily clad wearing flip-flops and... That's only for function, Sean, because yes. uh, there's, there, this is just a walking point-to-point -point thing. So, again, they're out there. Uh, you just got to be aware, right? You're swimming in the ocean. You know the sharks are there. You just got to be aware of what they look like and what they're going to do to you. So uh, we've definitely had buddies who have gotten very excited after talking to a girl for a couple minutes before realizing, uh, hey, dude, she's going to ask for money uh, to go any further. So don't <laughs> Ma be that Magic guy. Magic Man Blanco is saying, Wait, those ladies don't just love guys working at the Poop River? <laughs> uh, Magic Man Blanco, of course, works in the great uh, sanitation okay. department. Uh, Research Flat Earth has a great point, as he has many. Um, best advice, find a bachelorette party. Yeah, if you're, if you're, <laughs> this, most of this advice is probably aimed towards like the 35 and up crowd or 30 plus crowd who are, uh, you know, have a, have a girlfriend or a wife or whatever, but if you're a single guy, yeah, like bachelor party is the best way in um, well, I, to I, meeting a bunch of girls that are like, you know, looking to have fun. For the younger kids who don't know this yet, um, you're a dude, and when you go to a strip club, you're a hot chick. Yeah. They want you to come in because you're going to spend money. You should not be spending money to get a ride to a strip club. Oh, you yes. You should not I be spending money... Uh, to be in a strip club. You, you should be paying for alcohol, but you should be thinking, hey, I'm a hot chick going to a club. I'm yes. not paying for this the shit. The power dynamic has changed. Never pay a... So usually what they do is, um, first off, if you're going to a strip club, go name brand. If it's like you and your buddies, bachelorette or bachelor parties, go to like a nice one. There's a handful of nice ones uh, out there that are like, you know, kind of name brand ones. Don't go off like for the random ones. And we should make a fantasy tier list of <laughs> oh, strip clubs. <yeah. laughs> so there's, you want to avoid tier three and tier four here. The value proposition isn't there. Yeah, and, and they all have packages, um, and it's always someone's bachelor party, even if it's not. So to that's be clear, another. They have like package purchase options, not yeah. packages. No, no, no. Got it. Not, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it'll be like, you know, hey, we'll pick up six guys, we'll, we'll bring you to the club. We'll, it'll be like, I don't know. 100, 200 bucks, but you also get a bottle of alcohol. So you're essentially paying for the alcohol. Again, Those deals are, are good deals. They're going to try to rip you Relatively. off because 
they know that you're too dumb to realize that you're the hot chick. Yeah. So just be the hot chick. Be confident, it, winning posture. Yeah. And tell them you're not paying for shit until you get there. And you can't trust these places with your card. So if you if you give them your card for the initial thing, as soon as you get there, sign out that card, lock it away, and don't think anything of it. And then the rest of the time, the cash you bring, that's the cash you're dealing with at the club. Again, if that's your cup of tea. And you got anything else, Sean? Because I, I got an important one. Oh, um, it, uh, yeah, keep going. Uh, if, you, if you are the kind of person who uh, maybe you are younger, maybe you want to – do some hanging out, but you want to be a little bit more casual. Sport coat Charlie, <laughs> baby. You throw this guy on, you go from what looking like a guy watching games to looking like a guy who's about to close a deal. Yes, and, exactly. And no matter how classy the jacket is, it's a jacket. Uh, it's going to get you into any restaurant that might have some, um, what do you want to call them, fascist rules about what you need to wear. It's going to allow you to, you know, not look like you're – Four friends who are complete slobs walking around in their t-shirts and their shorts. And if you did want to maybe find someone who wasn't working uh, to, to have some companionship with, also a good way to, uh, you know, draw them in. Not, not that we would, but, no. that if, you know, other people. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that's about it. I would also just... I've got one yeah, sure, quite sensible one. Yeah. Believe it or not. Um, I learned this last night. It was... The rules of the table game. So I know what blackjack is. Yeah, yeah. I've played it. I've dealt it for dozens of years. No problem. Um, so I sat down and just assumed the rules would be the same. And what we were actually playing was twenty. If the dealer got twenty-two, that was a push. So now I nearly fell off my chair. Like no, no. So be careful because a lot of these places on the strip have modified blackjack. Yeah. You're not getting true. So if you're playing blackjack, that's a great point. If you're playing blackjack, you have to do a little digging to find a three to two table that is traditional hand shuffled blackjack with a shoe. Any other like bonus, um, no bust blackjack, dealer push 22. There are all these different variations that they're doing to just, you know, try shows and you, screw you. It shows you how much the casinos have zero fucks to give about yeah. you. Uh, if you're but ever. Win bets, great. Ever, well, sports books are different, yeah, but the yeah. casino, the casino floor, they're, <laughs> they're dropping these games out there. Like Malcolm's describing, they're making it look like regular blackjack. And then in the corner, it will say like blackjack pays six to five or yeah. 22 is a push. Now, or, now wind, wind does have three to two. The, the thing with the wind, depending on your crowd, the higher table limits, um, Circa does have three to two blackjack. So shout out to Derek. He's, he's keeping an eye on the D gens. You can get like $25 table minimums, three to two blackjack. Yeah, I mean, but there they clearly shows you the average person who's gambling zero, zero fucks for their money. Yeah, they, they don't know what they're doing. Again, oh, that's the other thing about blackjack. Yeah, it, it, you kind of don't want to sit at a too low of a limit. And I know, like Sean, you will often not care about this, but you buy into this situation where you have li like live live ammunition sitting next to you, people who have no clue how to play the yeah. game. And, and in my mind, that's actually one of my like if you're gonna play blackjack. Step up to the plate and find yourself a $25 table. The fi difference between a $15 table and a $25 table is assholes. The, it's an asshole filter. Yeah. Most assholes are going to look to play the lower limits because they have no clue what they're doing. Now, you still can find assholes at the higher limits. I, I, I watched a lady lose $20,000 at, at a double deck, <laughs> splitting tens and, and hitting 16 against it's the insane. two. insane. But uh, those people aside... The more, the higher limit you play, you're gonna filter out these idiots who don't know how to play it, a numbers game where there's no thinking, zero thinking to the game. I know Sean also doesn't like that, but zero thinking to the game. No, you just you just play what the card says. Um, but you still apply. You let you let the thinking happen. Like you'll pause and be like, should I do this? Yeah. I don't know. I, I like to I like to act like I'm playing yeah. the game. It's a robot about thing it a little bit. Me. Robot. Only. No, I know. But also too, the only reason I like the $15 tables is because when I feel the deck getting cold and I have a divining rod of whether or not I'm going to be getting hot or cold in blackjack, it's, it's one of my uh, great gifts as a human being. <laughs> I like to be able to knock it down to 15. This is my sacrifice to you. I'll give you the 15, but when it's hot, then, uh, and then most hands I'm playing like 45, 60, 65. I also like varying my bet limits. It's, it's a way to step. It's a way to be one step ahead of the gambling gods. Again, no one's going to think there's a, there's a science to it. There is. There's a sweet science to figuring out how much to bet, when to bet it, 
It's, it's all got handicapping right. Uh, yeah, we, we have slight differences of opinions there, but that's fine. Uh, both ways work. Lane, all right, Lane Elliott has a question. <laughs> Never been to a casino before. Is it wrong to think slots are a waste of time? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, slots. Uh, no, it's not wrong, no, but no, you were right it, to have that thought. Yes. It is wrong to think slots are a waste oh, okay. of time. If you are, uh, slots can be effective to do a couple of things. One, a great way to sneak off and, um, you know, drown your sorrows in, in a little bit of a, ah, fuck, I just lost all these bets. I yeah. can't stand to sit next to these guys. Kill let time. me just Let me just go out here and sit, and I don't want to play a table game because that's more time investment. I'm just going to pump some money into the slot machine, bang, 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 lose it, feel better. Uh, slots are a good way to lose and have the casino give you comps. They, the slots are the best way for the casino to make money. So if you give them a little taste, you'll find that you start getting, a, you know, oh, you're a slot player? Let me, get, let me send you this offer. Let me send you that offer. So uh, generally, not, it's not a way to make money, but it's certainly a way to, uh, you know, like the prop players will play some, uh, they'll play some dumb action in yeah. NFL to show that they're not a complete sharp. It's a little <laughs> bit like that. You'll find yourself getting some free room offers that maybe you weren't if you weren't hitting the slots a tiny bit. Yeah, uh, 100%. Terrell's asking, can we go on a craps heater later? Yes. Heater, heater's <laughs> loading. Uh, we've yes, sir. Just, Cra- just craps, finished putting don't, the Don't ever through. play against the table uh, if, you, if you think that's an EV proposition. It's a negative mojo proposition to be playing against and the table at craps. Don't be scared of the game. I'm Mal- Malcolm, as a dealer, I'm sure you can. But it, it's just math. I know there's a lot of chips and there's a lot of dice. And like Sean said, if you, if you tip the dealers a very little amount, we're talking like, have them ride a dollar on one of your long shot bets. Have them ride a dollar on your pass line bet. And they are going to find how you're playing, and they're going to try to make sure you don't screw up. Now, there are right and wrong ways to play craps. And like Sean said, you bet against the table. Sure, you might think you're getting the house edge, but you're not. And all you're doing is alienating yourself to the whole table. I'll tell you what, when someone is betting against me as the shooter, I'm throwing the dice at their chips as hard as possible every time. Well, and, and, and stack your chips. You mentioned, up again, bitch. you mentioned the slots thing, good angle on the comps there. 100%. Um, another one, if you're just looking to kill time, get free drinks, pie gal is the game. Pie gal is 100% the game because what is it like 60% of the time it ends up in a push. I mean, the, the short and long of the numbers are basically, yeah, uh, it's closer to, I think, 70% of the time. You're winning or pushing, so you're not yeah. losing. And so it's, it's not a game you're going to make a ton of money on. There are some fun bonuses. But if you want to sit down with buddies and you don't want to have the, the caffeinated nose beer experience of crap, which can <laughs> last like f- two minutes. Yeah, it can be done in two minutes or you can have an epic 90 minutes. You sit down at a pie gout table and it's mushrooms. It's, it's going to last a while. You're going to get a ton of drinks. It's the it, number one table game for drinks is pie gout. Blackjack, you're playing a game. How, how, how often do you think? One game every minute? Yes. Pie gout, you're playing a game every three to five minutes, best case. Like if the dealer is like fast, if the dealer's slow and the good dealers know to be slow because they're helping you out, I mean, you might only play, what, 30 hands an hour, or uh, sorry, 15 hands an hour. Like that's, that's a lot of free drinks. Yeah, and, and you can ask, again, if you're intimidated to play Pi Gow, it's pretty easy to pick up. And you can even ask the dealer like how to play your hand and they will set your best hand. Make yeah. it very easy for you. Oh yeah, you re- literally have to do nothing. Uh, we got one more question. What casino game would be the best for someone going there for the first time? Um, I want Malcolm to answer this. Okay, first. yeah. There's a game, I don't know how familiar you are, um, either called Baccarat or Punto Banco. Baccarat they have. Yeah. Right. Do you ever play that at all? So I tried because it's the game that you see in the high limit area yeah. with all the ballers playing it. And then yeah. you, when you find out, it's basically you're betting on a coin flip. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? What's not to like about that? That's why I love it. <laughs> It's a casino, great, there is casino war if you're a true DJ. Uh, play Bakker out before casino. Okay, yeah. Um, I, I think just take a look at the blackjack card and know how to play and, and play blackjack and just start off there. Mal- Malcolm's right in the sense that the game's easy, but when you look and see a ba- Bakker table, it's terrifying. Yeah. And so it, it's a little intimidating. It has a little bit of craps intimidation. You know it, what I mean? It doesn't instinctively make sense. The numbers are a little bit crazy. Yeah. But you pick it up in no time at all. And there's a bit of theater to it as well. I don't know how, if they play the way we play. I don't know, but the Chinese play it a lot. And they'll take control of the shoe. So the, the player will have the shoe. And they'll peel the card out. And they'll peel it out for 45 seconds. And if it's a winner, they'll launch it across the room to great fanfare. Like, it's <laughs> they don't let you do that They here. don't do that. Oh, <laughs> he goes, gone. Like, um, 
absolutely brilliant. So yeah, there's a lot of theatre to it, and you're bitten heads or tails. Like, um, so you can't do your money again. If you're getting free drinks, then you're going to win five and lose five. If you lose fifty dollars over the case of an hour, no problem. Like, yeah. you'll happily take it. Yeah. So uh, over, over, across the pond, what is the most popular? Is it blackjack? Like over here, it's definitely black. Blackjack is still the dominant game out there. Is that roulette and blackjack? Yeah. yeah. See, over you guys have proper like single zero. We yeah, have, yeah, we have like single zero, double zero, they triple some zero. Triples. Yeah, they introduced like, the triple zero, which yeah. is a real, that's a real. Yeah. My roulette wheel, obviously, my business I run, I've got my own casino equipment, so mine is a single zero. Like, uh, so I, I'm going to struggle to play these <laughs> these double zeros out here. Just yeah. ethically, I'm not on board. Yeah, <laughs> EV dripping down the drain. All right, yeah. all right, uh, we got to get ready. We got to we got to head out, go watch the game. Uh, thank you as always. Hey, check it, check out the week one NFL picks podcast. If you somehow missed it, the college football week two picks podcast, check out Malcolm on Twitter at Mal underscore B underscore sport. Got him on the MLB gambling podcast, uh, does a ton of stuff for the sports gambling podcast network. Again, shout out to Terrell and, uh, guys always appreciate the five star ratings and reviews. Screenshot it, submit it in the app, uh, $50 gift certificate every Monday, a.k.a. Merch Monday. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Football is back. Kramer, let it ride. Oh, the boys, that was good. Fun time.